I'm going to show you the graphical model of this carburetor that I created a few years ago, but this time I'm going to show it functioning with real life sound effects from an actual chainsaw. Seeing the motions in this unique way, you'll be able to gather an understanding of what's going on inside the carburetor when the chainsaw is going through its different levels of operation, such as high revs and idling, and when we're adjusting the carburetor screws, etc. Okay, so I'll begin the explanation with a stationary carburetor. The chainsaw engine's not yet functioning. This being a cross-sectional view of a two-stroke carburetor, we've got some fuel up at the top in the metering reservoir, which when the engine's running will supply fuel to the high and low jet fuel tubes. And just before the engine does start, the throttle butterfly is in the idling position. There's a small gap there around the sides. And now we'll start the chainsaw. <laughs> As the operator pulsates on the throttle trigger, the throttle butterfly opens and closes periodically. But when opened to its maximum, it allows a maximum flow rate of air through the carburetor to the engine, drawing out maximum fuel from the main jet. However, fuel for idling speed comes mainly from the low jet, rather than the main jet. From this point, where the engine's running well, turning the high screw anti-clockwise outwards, allowing more fuel out of the main jet, would mean there's too much fuel now going into the engine, and the engine's now struggling, and would eventually stop. Essentially, the engine wasn't equipped to combust that amount of fuel, and it choked it. From the engine running well again, adjusting the H-screw inwards clockwise, reducing the amount of fuel coming from the main jet, means that the engine can combust the slight reduction of fuel much easier, so the engine revs a raise. But as the screw is screwed in further, and less fuel comes through, there isn't enough fuel there for combustion, and so engine revs reduce, and eventually, in most cases, the engine will stop. Just to clarify, this high level of revving, by the way, is usually considered as over-revving, and not generally thought of as actually a good thing. And that's because, as there's a reduced amount of fuel going into the engine, of course, with it being a two-stroke, there's also a reduced amount of lubricating oil. And so, the engine running like this would have less lubrication, and over time, could produce more wear. So, it's much better to have an engine that's running more like this, so it's slightly richer in fuel, not too rich so the engine doesn't run right, but it's slightly richer in order to have a better lubrication of the engine. Okay, so looking at adjusting fuel air mixture for idling, which can be adjusted by the low screw. So from the idling speed running correctly, let's say, turning the screw anti-clockwise outwards allows more fuel down the fuel tube of the low jet, and continuing to do this will just choke up the engine again and engine revs lower, producing that lumpy, uneven running sound. And eventually, the engine will most probably stop because there's far too much fuel for the engine to combust correctly. But just going back to that, the way to correct this kind of running is to adjust the low screw clockwise inwards until the engine sounds better, runs more even. Okay, so from there, let's now say again that we've got a decent idling speed. And so, continuing to turn the low screw in further will continue to reduce the amount of fuel coming out of the low jet. And that will make the fuel-air mixture more and more lean of fuel. And for a little while, the engine revs will raise as the engine becomes that little bit leaner. But eventually, it will get too lean and the engine won't run well at all and quite possibly stop. Because this is now in a fuel starvation state. And so, if this has happened, then what I do is I I turn the low screw outwards, probably quarter of a turn, and then restart the engine. From there, I continue to turn the screw anti-clockwise, letting more fuel down until the engine sounds much better. So that's made the fuel-air mixture for the idling correct. Now let's look at the idling speed. Adjusting the idling screw in here, clockwise, mechanically pushes on to the lever of the throttle butterfly. And the more it screws in, pushing it back, the more the butterfly opens, allowing more air into the carburetor, which pulls out more of that fuel out of the main jet, and as a result, engine revs raise. This speed would be too fast for the chainsaw to idle because the chain would be moving. So to adjust it, of course, we turn the screw backwards again, anti-clockwise. And that closes up the throttle butterfly, reducing the amount of air coming into the carburetor, and the engine revs lower again. So getting an happy medium with the idling speed is a must. Not too high that the chain is turning, and not too low. An ideal midpoint. And at that, I want to thank you for watching this short video, which I hope you found interesting and educational. And if you haven't done so already, please like and subscribe, and I'll be back soon. Thank you for watching.